order. Question number three, Materia Ture. I te manga o te whare tina koe, tina koutou katoa nga mema o te o tō tātou whare. My question is to the Minister for Building and Housing and asks, does he stand by all his answers to oral question number one in the House yesterday? The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, yes, and particularly my answer pointing out how the government's insulation and smoke alarm requirements will save 21 <laughs> lives a year and the fact that our government has invested $500 million uh, in making our homes warmer, drier and safer 16 times what the previous government spent. Okay. Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Isn't it a fact that he misled the House yesterday when he claimed that 18 lives would be saved through the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill, when in fact the evidence is those lives would be saved by a much higher standard of insulation and a range of other safety measures, including a heating device? The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, I stand uh, by the numbers yesterday. They are provided in an economic analysis research report in which it said, and I quote, the health related benefits arise primarily from the retrofitting of insulation. A reduction in mortality was the largest uh, benefit, preventing 18 deaths per year. That is a report that was commissioned uh, independently from my ministry, and I stand by it. Order. Point. Point of order, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table two reports that show the connection between the 18 deaths and just a higher standard of insulation and heating. We, don't, we just need the, the two first title of those, of the, the first of the those dates. reports is the cost-benefit analysis for a minimum standard for rental housing from November 2014. And the second? The second report is the impact of retrofitted insulation and new heaters on health services utilisation and costs, pharmaceutical costs and mortality from October 2011. And I just want confirmation they're not readily available for members if they want them. Uh, I don't. I found them on the internet, sir. They could be publicly available. If they're publicly available, then members can source them for themselves. Supplementary question, Dr. Parmjeet Parma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the Minister, why does the government not support the housing warrant of fitness bill proposed by the member? Oh, the Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, the government is not supporting the bill because it goes too far. It is impractical. It would make it an unlawful act to rent or use a property that does not have glass visibility strips and security stays on all windows. I know my own private home in Nelson doesn't comply. I suspect most members of this House would not comply. I do find it ironic that the Greens would compel glass visibility strips on the windows of all other people's buildings, but actually do not even have them in their own in Bowen House. It's that classic policy of, from the Greens, do order, as we say. Order, order. We don't need that part to the answer. Supplementary. Sup order. Supplementary. I have a point of order, the Honourable Dr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I seek leave of the House to have a photo of no, Mr. Tory's office. Order, that's not. <laughs> order! The Minister will resume his seat if he wishes to stay to answer the balance of the questions. I remind Dr. Nick Smith when I rise to my feet and call for order, that's the time for him to, to resume his seat. I don't want to have to remind him of that again. So, Supplementary question, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the Minister saying that it is silly and petty to have glass visibility strips on windows and doors in rental homes when ACC reports that 133 children are injured by either falling through a closed glass window or out of a window every week in this country? More than 500 children a month injured. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, if that member truly believed that glass visibility strips should be on all windows, I simply challenge her, why does she not have them in her own office? If the member really believed that was a practical requirement to impose on every building owner in New Zealand, she could start by setting a good example. What a supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, will the Minister apologise to this House for misleading New Zealanders by claiming that 18 lives will be saved by his bill, when all of the evidence that he has referred to and has been tabled in the House 
shows that those 18 lives would only be saved by a much higher standard of insulation and a clean heating device than what is required in his bill. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, no, because the member is wrong, and I can quote directly from the analysis, and it says, I quote, the health-related benefits arise primarily from the retrofitting of insulation. It goes on to quote the reduction in mortality that would, that would occur, the benefits of hospitalisation, and the reduction in pharmaceutical costs. They are exactly the things the government is doing. What we're not going to do is to have a pedantic warrant of fitness that will impose costs of administration alone of over $100 million, and of which, actually, most members of this parliament's own private homes would not comply with. Supplementary question, Matilda Toure. Doesn't his advice go on to say that those 18 lives the research on those 18 lives is based on an insulation standard as at 2008, a much higher standard than the 1978 miserable standard in his bill. Why won't he tell the whole story? Uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, because the member misunderstands both the bill and the regulations that the government has put forward. New Zealand did not require insulation in homes that were newly constructed until 1978. What our bill and regulation requires is that if a home has no insulation, it will be required to install insulation as per the current standards. No, the current standards. That's very clear in the regulations. What the government is not going to do is to have someone who put insulation in their house in 2010 now having to rip it out and put stuff in that meets the current standard. It's exactly the sort of approach that we take, for instance, in an area of earthquake-prone buildings, where there is a different standard for those buildings that are new, but that does not necessarily mean it makes sense to require absolutely every building in New Zealand to meet new building standards. Supplementary question, Matilda Ture. Thank you. Isn't it also the case that the Grimes report the Minister tabled on Tuesday said that with a higher standard of insulation and a heating device, older New Zealanders with respiratory illness would gain an additional four years of life through those two measures, neither of which are in his bill. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. I would firstly draw the member's attention to the existing housing regulations that make reference to the requirements around heating devices. The second is simply this. Order. I haven't even Point of order, Matilda Tiro. Here, Mr Speaker, I did specifically refer to the Grimes report order. that he tabled. Order. He's order. made order. no mention. I heard the question. What we need to do is allow the Minister the courtesy to respond to the question. If the Minister then doesn't answer the question, let's have a look at the matter then. But at least allow the Minister to get more than 10 or 12 words out before we can address whether he's addressed the question or not. Uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. And the bit the Minister a member does not seem to understand is that if we imposed a requirement on every landlord in New Zealand to provide a new heat pump today, that is a cost that you impose on the sector that would ultimately be passed on in rents. There are not free goods when you have a regulatory cost that is passed on, and that is the part that the member seems to be ignorant of. Order. I'm just going to invite the member to repeat the question because I, I, I know what the point of order will be. Would the member please repeat the question Thank you, Mr. for Speaker. the benefit of the minister? Isn't it true that the Grimes report that the minister tabled in the House on Tuesday said that with a higher standard of insulation and a heating device, older New Zealanders with respiratory illness would gain an additional four years of life based on those measures, neither of which are in his bill? The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. First, the member is mistaken. The report that I table from Mr Arthur Grimes earlier in the week was solely on the issue of home insulation, not on the issue of heating. And in that respect, the member is incorrect. Question, oh, supplementary question, Matilda Turo. Why is the minister making up numbers and misrepresenting research, misrepresenting the research to show his bill does better than it will, when all he needs to do is improve the standard of insulation in the bill to make sure that New Zealanders' lives will genuinely be saved through this measure. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. The confusion of the member is confirmed by that very question. 
in that the bill does not set the level of regulation that is in the bill, that is set in the regulations. And the regulations make plain that for new insulation being installed, it needs to meet the modern standard, but that it would be unreasonable for someone that has an insulation standard that was built in the 1990s to have to rip that out to meet some sort of pedantic requirements of which the Green unreasonably would impose costs on the sector, and those costs are ultimately passed on in rents and hurt the very people that we're attempting to help. Question number four.